episode of the Graham Show with me Chris Goodrum. As per usual a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode, the show liked, commented, all that kind of stuff. Yep, yeah, uh, very very much appreciated. Um, <laughs> no likes, comments or retweets or anything from anybody at, involved in the uh, in the show in relative terms. Um, obviously nothing from Brickladdy, they, they never sort of acknowledge anybody else's um, tweets or anything like that and likewise with Scotch Monk Whiskey Society they never do either done several episodes of the show either using their their bottlings or I think I've done one or two actually wholly on their bottlings and never had anything out of them maybe I ought to do an episode of the show on their poor bottlings um, that might get their attention um, yeah maybe if I'm feeling a bit mischievous I, I may well do that but uh, it may well end up just being more hassle than it's worth anyway um, you guys watched the show, you guys liked it and commented, so that's that's really enough for me, so um, thank you very, very much. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed as yet, please do so. Um, it doesn't give me any more brandy points or anything like that, it's just nice to have a few more subscribers, so uh, if you haven't subscribed, please hit the scrub button, scrub, sub, scrub, sub, <laughs> just hit the button, all right. Um, anyway. Um, this week's episode of the show, if I can actually start talking properly, is, uh, well, as I mentioned last week, I mentioned Cairo, and I thought, well, I'm kind of going to have to do uh, an episode of the show on them, but obviously it's only got three samples of their stuff. I've kind of had to sort of, you know, find something suitable to, to pair with it. And so I thought, well, let's stick with the Scandinavian theme, although I don't have another Finnish distillery. I do have, as you can see from the title page, uh, the Danish distillery or samples from the Danish distillery Moscard and there's probably more to them to a certain extent than meets the eye um, they're obviously both Scandinavian or yeah that's always a good one to start with um, and they, they, they were established roughly about the same sort of time but obviously there are uh, quite a few differences between the two which we'll obviously get on into in due course um, so uh, so yeah, to ba basically I thought, well yeah, they, they kind of work together quite nicely. I did have four samples of, of, of Moscard, the, the whole of their range, but one seems to have disappeared. I'm not entirely sure where, probably the Gremlins have had it. <laughs> it was the Oloroso one, so it's probably not the biggest uh, loss to mankind, it has to be said. <laughs> Ooh, uh, start as you mean to go on. Anyway, um, so a bit of information about the distillery, it won't bore you to death over them. So. Uh, Funnily enough, Cairo, um, it seems to be the way of dis modern distillery foundings. English and sort of British distilleries, they all seem to be sort of like founded by a group of mates having a pint in the pub. Um, Scandinavians all seem to be a case of having a pint in the sauna. Um, or maybe not a pint, I don't know. But it just seems to me, I mean, sort of, you know... Um, uh, Mac Myra was, was founded by a group of mates having a drink together. Don't know whether they were actually in the sauna or not, or the hot tub or what have you. Uh, but certainly the guys from Cairo uh, were in the... Um, um, in the in the sauna and sort of like asking the question why there was no Finnish rye. Well, so, as you do when you're having a sauna. Um, I, that, I mean, that's the first question that comes to my mind when I'm in the sauna. Um, <laughs> not the fact that I'm sweating buckets, you know. Um, anyway, so they, they had this kind of like thing and uh, um, they thought well you know why not why don't we do something about it you know and um, <clears throat> they, have, they they basically it was a, a kind of like starting from scratch kind of thing doing it in the, in your front room or I think it was their mother's house actually I think um, yeah so that basically the head distiller um, Kala I believe his name is uh, basically <laughs> Your parents go on holiday, what do you normally throw a party, but no, they turn, turn the house into a giant brewery, um, to, or should we say to make the wash, uh, the mash for the, uh, the first distillation. Uh, and obviously at that time they didn't have a distillery, so they kind of uh, asked uh, a local distillery, um, oh, uh, was it Beer Hunters, apparently, um, and um, 
made the first batch and kind of started to try and sell it apparently uh, they thought you know it was you know obviously unaged white spirit which they thought was was pretty good and um, they set about getting feedback on this and apparently uh, at one point um, got took a, a sample to the, uh, the the whisker show in London and were pouring drams in the gentlemen's toilets apparently I mean that sounds a bit seedy but um, at the time and I I think they probably still are. The, the, the whiskey show is held at um, the Horse Guards thing. Is it Horse Guards? No, Royal Artillery um, place in, in in London. It's a lovely venue in actual fact. You know, really old building, lots of wood and panelling and all that kind of stuff. And the, and the gentlemen's toilets are actually pretty lavish, it has to be said. You know, buildings of that time sort of kind of you know, lavished uh, money on, the, you know, the, that sort of thing. Um, so it's not really as seedy as it sounds. But anyway, um, eventually in 2014, they founded the distillery and have basically uh, gone on from there. As you possibly know, they started off doing the usual. They did gin while they were waiting for their, their spirit to mature. And as soon as it basically hit three years, Bing! Out it came. And this is the biggest issue I have with not just obviously Scandinavian rise and things, but European rise. And I've said it so many times, it's they bottle it and release it far too young, in my personal opinion. Now, obviously, <laughs> I'm in the minority here because obviously a lot of people in Germany, France and so on and so forth love that kind of young rye character. And if they didn't, then you wouldn't have the likes of, of you know, um, you can't even think of a French distillery now that, that uh, Guillain Louvain um, suddenly springs to mind, although I don't think they do a rye. Um, and there's copious sort of German and Bavarian distilleries, Storning and so on and so forth, um, that do young rye whiskey that's just sort of like smells like it's spent five minutes in the cask. Um, and anyway. I'm kind of preempting, I guess, the tasting, and I shouldn't do that. But you know, that's obviously my biggest issue I've had with uh, certainly European rise and things like that. But anyway, we'll see where um, Cairo kind of fits into this sort of whole scheme of things. Um, the second distillery, Mossgard, is um, again established not that long after. Um, the uh, Cairo Distillery uh, was actually founded in 2015 by uh, husband and wife team Jeet and Jess Mosgard. Uh, he was an ex-civil civil, uh, engineer and she was an ex-social worker and apparently um, just had this desire to sort of make whiskey, as you do. Um, and obviously found a few pennies down the back of the sofa in order to, to, to build a distillery. Um, and um, so they, they bought a farm uh, in Denmark, um, in the southern Finn, Finn, um, and apparently they the water source there is quite it's quite good for uh, not only making beer but obviously making making whiskey as well. They've obviously, no shortage of, of good quality grain and uh, well, barley, I should say, and. Um, they decided that they wanted to go down the whole organic route, so they're focusing on, on, on everything being organic. I don't know whether the oak they source is organic. Um, and uh, that the first whiskey was released in 2015. Now, they make uh, or have made for them a number of bespoke casks, 50 litre casks, um, which basically, again, although they don't say, you know, enhances the maturation or speeds up the maturation thankfully um, gets a lot of oak character into young spirit very very quickly so it generally also the samples that I have here are three to sort of five four or five years old so basically again really young spirit um, and like Cairo went down the gin route first before you know releasing their uh, whiskies which were first released in 2019 um, and I think that was, um, no, it was a couple of years after that that I got these samples uh, that were kindly sent by um, Alex uh, from uh, uh, Cognac Company, uh, whose name has slightly eluded me, and hopefully if I keep talking, it will come back to me. Um, oh, Hermitage Cognacs. And uh, uh, 
Cairo samples, not entirely sure where they came from, uh, probably a mixture of, uh, of places, but uh, uh, they're currently, I think, distributed by... No, like, that completely annoys me as well. I'm having a really good day today. It's, I'm going to blame it on the heat. It's affecting my brain. Um, but anyway, that's immaterial where the samples came from. So, um, yeah, Moscow. So they're, they're, they're focusing on organic sort of uh, barley. Like I said, don't know whether the wood is organic or, or not. Uh, their, their desire is to make a very Danish whiskey. Does that mean very, very young whiskey? I don't honestly know, but their aim is to make a very Danish whiskey. Now, the weird thing is in all of this, um, they don't actually release one that's aged in American oak. Um, so they've got basically, uh, uh, I think it's pit, a fully matured um, uh, in, uh, uh, no, it's finished. So basically, yes, you have, uh, I'll get round to that bit in a minute, but basically they do sort of sherry finished, they do a peated one. Um, the, the only one that's actually aged in American oak is the peated malt, you know, and so you're going, well, am I going to get some idea of the distillery character, you know, when you don't do an American oak or a sort of, you know, an ex bourbon uh, bottling. But anyway, we shall see. It's another interesting question, I suppose. Um, of course, today's episode, the show seems to be full of interesting questions, doesn't it? So, um, without much more ado, let's take a look at today's line. My dream disappears when the sun comes up. I'm alone right, okay. the So, uh, we're going to kick off, obviously, with the uh, Cairo Malt Rye Whiskey. Uh, this is bottled at 47.2. And, um, as I probably mentioned, you know, Cairo uh, just seemed to have this sort of, like, obsession with with rye although they do make some malt as well as which we will get on to but uh, this is obviously malted rye uh, bottling number two is called the cairo wood smoke malt rye um, and this was actually allegedly inspired by the sauna <laughs> this i'm assuming the sauna is obviously sort of um, central to uh, Scandinavian life, I imagine. Um, so apparently the malted rye that's used to make this has been smoked um, in a 100-year-old Rishi barn uh, using alder wood. Um, so, interesting. Um, the uh, Basically, it was then aged in a combination of uh, French virgin American oak and ex-Bourbon casks. So, uh, I'm assuming when, when they smoked, I am assuming they smoked the barley, so almost as in malting, uh, the malt part of the malting process, possibly in addition to malting, maybe. Again, I don't know. Um, maybe I should have done my homework a bit better, but you know, at the end of the day, it's all about uh, what's, in the, uh, what's in the glass, as they say. Now, the third bottling is a very special one-off uh, single cask, uh, called the Cairo uh, Malt Rye Whiskey uh, Mont Blasiac cask, uh, bottled at 53%. So this was a bottling that was done for last year's Whiskey Exchange show um, and was matured, was made with 100% malted Finnish rye, which was finished in a Mont Blasiac cask, which for those of you that don't know is a sweet wine from Bordeaux, uh, after being initially aged in ex-American oak. So a single cask, I believe, um, Y, can't read my own writing now, YA71993. And uh, like I said, it was bottled in 2022. So now we're going to move on to Moscard. So these are all single malt whiskies. This is the Port cask batch three bottled at 49%. Nice to see everything non chill filtered and uh, bottled uh, at uh, over 46%. So, this spent four years in 50 litre casks uh, made from both Tawny and Ruby Port staves. So, uh, apparently, the distillery not only um, buys in uh, pre made 50 litre casks, they also have them made from the staves of you know uh, larger casks. So, I mean, obviously, these would have been ex bariques basically. Uh, so, yeah, so this has spent four years entirely in the two tawny in the uh, tawny port and ruby port staved casks. Uh, bottling number two of the Moscard ones is the Pedro Zimenez cask. 
Uh, this is bottled at 46.4. This is batch number seven. Uh, it spent time initially in French oak, uh, around about two and a half years before spending a further 12 to 18 months again in 50 litre casts that had been made from ex Pedro Zimenez stage um, stave. So uh, I believe the French oak they initially aged it in was virgin French oak. Um, and the final bottling is the uh, peated. This is batch number six, bottled at 48.4%. Um, so peated single malt, uh, two years again, or two, roughly around about two years in uh, virgin French oak, and then uh, a further two years after that in ex bourbon. Uh, again, I, I don't know whether the, I'm assuming the ex bourbon was made. 50 litre cast were made from ex-Bourbon staves but they don't actually physically state whether that was indeed the case but anyway um, so lots and lots of small casts as we know young spirit gets the oak in quickly is it going to be sort of like oh yeah mm, lots of oak lots of young spirit we shall see uh, and we shall see what uh, what Cairo is like so um, yeah, really looking forward to this so let's kick off with a bit of uh, malted rye then shall we what you Okay, so let's start with the rye. Let's see what uh, this gives us on the nose end, shall we? Yeah, well, it, it perfectly fits the, the uh, sort of aroma profile of um, young European, well, I know this is Scandinavia, but European rye whiskies. It's got that young, off the still intensity, but it, um, yeah, it's got that sort of intensity of dark rye character. Bran flakes, rye flakes, um, dark spice, rye bread, vanilla. It's a little bit more oak than I remember from the past. Um, I think, again, this is, I think the chunk is aged in um, virgin uh, American oak, I think. I didn't make a note of the, the cast makeup for this. Um, but it's certainly seems like there's more oak influence than previous bottlings and previous bottlings you know, really were kind of like young oily not enough oak um loads and loads of off the still notes at least from this bottling anyway there does appear to be a little bit more of a semblance of balance um certainly the oak is is adding some vanilla some a little bit of sweetness to kind of balance up the sort of not quite bitterness of the rye, but you know, you know what rye can be like. Um, it just has that sort of slight edge to it. Um, nice spiciness. Um, like I said, a little bit on the young side. Maybe not quite so young as uh, as uh, it possibly has been in the past. But then again, maybe it's like I said, more noticeable oak. Anyway, let's see what the palate's like. That's young, that's raw, that's intense. Green, green wood, green cardamom. Um, bit of dark rye. Again, slight faintiness. Um, no wood, I'm not getting any, no vanillins. Um, it's young, intense, dark rye spices, dark rye, a bit of breadiness. Um, slight potpourri, no real finish to it. It's very... I mean, the alcohol is, is, is noticeable. I mean, it's only 47%, but it really makes the finish a little bit on... I wouldn't quite go as far as saying the hot side, but it does kind of make it stop very short and very, very quick, and I'm not getting a great deal of aftertaste. It kind of like, yeah, batters the palate with, with an intensity, um, and then <coughs> there's not an awful lot else. I'm going to put a little drop of water. I've never actually put a little drop of water with the uh, with the uh, the Cairo but that's that uh... yeah it's not kind of floating my boat it really has the oak is now kind of like pretty much sunk off and I've got oily young slightly fainty rye or fainty spirit in actual fact there's a little soapiness as well this has not really done done it a great deal of favours to be honest with you.
on the other hand it's actually helped the palette because the palette is now a bit more sweeter it's brought forward some of that oak character um, the, the sort of edginess of the rye has just had its edge taken off shall we say um, it's still quite spicy it's young it's uh, oily but it's a little bit it's got some length now to it so it's kind of like a tale of two halves you put a little drop of water with it doesn't really do an awful lot for the nose helps the palate but anyway that's the uh the the the, the, that's the, the ride. right okay so let's move on to the wood smoked rye let's see what uh, this gives us then shall we well the wood smoke is obvious there um i mean i i wouldn't have it's not peat i mean that's the first thing you notice it's certainly not a peat uh smoke um i don't think i would have been able to pick out what wood it was actually used i'm not that good um but it's got a sort of a, a woody smoke um a little bit more oak in actual fact a bit more vanilla it's almost honeyed in character um it feels like it's got a little more maturity um it's not quite so raw there is a slight herbalness there um a lightness to the spices the, the rye is kind of almost playing second fiddle to to the smoke to be honest with you um there's a little meatiness there uh sort of herbal meatiness i mean yeah i mean that's that's pleasant it's still overall pretty young um there's no getting away from that um but it is definitely, definitely different. Let's see what the pounds went. Now that is actually longer, although it's 0.3% more alcohol than the previous one. It doesn't kind of cut it too short it's got a, a pleasant length the, the sort of smoke element is continuous it sort of starts at the beginning and just keeps going right the way through there is a little bit of honey a little bit of spice um the palette obviously feels younger than the nose suggests it's got that slight sort of youthful potpourri kind of character um i don't get too much faintiness although it is pretty young um and the rye really only sort of starts to sort of develop on the mid palate and come through on, on the end. So, slightly more successful bottling, I think. Um, a little bit more sort of length, a little bit more complexity. Um, but then again, it's like, how do you like your rye at the end of the day? If you like your rye sort of like young, intense and sort of almost ripping your head off, then brilliant. You know, you're going to love the Cairo, you know, uh, the, the, the malted rye. If you like a, a little bit more sort of interest, um, yeah, this has certainly got it. You know, the smokiness comes through and is obvious. And like I said, it doesn't, it's not peat, um, uh, but it's a definite, really nice smokiness there. So, yeah, that's that's a little bit more successful. Do you make me true as I count and so hard to say? Right, okay, so this should be interesting. Sort of, you know, Mont Blasiac finished um, uh, rye whiskey. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Oh, that's raw. Um, it's, I get almost smell the sort of like the grains. Um, it's like almost kind of picking up a handful of rye grain and going yep like that, you know. Um, there's a, a subtle whininess. It's not as in your face as I was expecting. Um, there's a touch of lime, vanilla, touch of toast possibly. Um, tea leaves uh, again a little bit of dark rye bread um, again the cask has kind of put taken the edge slightly off the intensity of the rye so it's kind of more sitting back but the, like I said the, the, the Mont Blasiac cask is adding a little bit of sweetness but again it's not in your face um, it's actually pretty well balanced I would say um, it works it works really nicely because the cask is adding that subtle sweetness that counterbalances the, the sort of the slight austerity shall we say of the the rye plus there's a little bit more vanilla as well from um the american oak 
little bit of tannin as well, but not a great deal. The French oak or uh, the virgin oak is only adding a, a little bit. So, yeah, overall it's it's pretty complex nose actually. Let's see what the parts are. Chewy, really chewy. Um, not as alcoholic as you would expect. And I mean, to be and be honest with you, the it, it doesn't come across anywhere near the, the actual fact that the sort of the um, forty um, seven point two, the the, the the lightest of the bottlings, uh, comes across more alcohol. And it just shows that it's not necessarily about the ABV. It's how well integrated the alcohol is with the rest of the spirit. Um, it's a bit young, again, it's a bit raw, uh, but the, the, the Montblasiac cask is adding the sweetness, it's taking the edge off the, the rawness to a certain amount. There's some honey, a little bit of toasted oak. Um, it's quite a, a, a pleasant experience in actual fact. The sort of, the, the rye and the sort of, the, the, the Montblasiac cask are kind of sort of, I wouldn't say at odds with each other because that would give you the wrong impression but they're kind of battling it out shall we say and it's a sort of a real kind of intriguing power it's okay you could you can argue that it doesn't really progress it, it, it kind of like starts off it delivers and carries on in that similar kind of vein with the sort of the cask and the rye kind of working um uh, like I said, not necessarily against each other, but sort of battling against each other. Um, and it has a, a lovely intensity. It's got a good length to it. Um, it's it's good. It's pleasant. Um, let's put a little drop of water and see what that does to it. Right, that's kind of brought out the cast notes. I'm getting more citrus now. A little bit of tangerine, orange, um, honey. Not that the the rye has kind of pretty much been sort of um, uh, I wouldn't kind of say stomped all over, but it's kind of subjugated the the rye to a certain extent. Um, yeah, let's see what the pass like. Hmm. I wouldn't say it's kind of flattened it, but it's kind of made it less interesting. Um, it's softer, it's a probably a, it's a little bit more homogenous, I suppose. Yes, the rye spices are nipping, nipping through there. There's a, possibly a little bit more emphasis on the youthfulness of the rye. Um, so basically, don't bother putting any water with it because it really doesn't do it. Well, it's not that it doesn't do it any favours. It doesn't kind of make it worthwhile, if you like. Uh, if you, if, I would stick to it neat, neat, uh, that's really quite an impressive uh, You told me a word of my dream, I began right, to okay, so on to the first of the three Moscard bottlings, let's see what uh, the nose gives us on this end. So, uh, 49%, uh, this is the uh, aged in um, uh, 50 litre tawny in uh, ruby port cask, or staved to finish. Quite chocolatey, herbal. It's got that kind of sub langerton esque kind of thing happening. Um, quite malty, barleyed. Um, the port is noticeable but subtle at the same time, if you if that makes an awful lot of sense. Um, there's a bit of dried red fruit, a little bit of perfume, quite aromatic don't get a handle on what the distillery character is because although I wouldn't say the port cask is kind of monstrous it is certainly sort of noticeable and it's kind of like you know the main focus focus of this it's to me it's got a lovely softness to it it's got a maltiness it's soft it's I wouldn't go as far as saying fruity it's difficult to sort of say obviously because the fruit character is all coming from the port cask but it's got a softness, it's pleasant, um, it's not blowing me away with complexity. Um, I must admit I don't know how much it retails for, I never, didn't look that up, it is bottled in 50 CL bottles, so um, yeah, it's it's okay. Let's see what the power's like.
chocolatey, nutty, dense, subtle red fruits, red, a little bit of tawny fruit coming through, syrup coated um, softness. Hmm, it's, it's pleasant. Again, I, I, I don't get a handle on any real spirit character. It's not like it's a, a sort of an oak monster, a wood monster, but the portwood is definitely the dominating character here. It's got slight herbalness again. That maybe that slight sort of Langerton-y kind of character, maybe not quite so sort of um, herbal as say Langerton, but it's certainly in that sort of style. Um, yeah, it's okay, it's pleasant. I mean, it, but I'm not the, the spirit itself is not telling me an awful lot, which to me is a little bit disappointing. Okay, so let's move on to the PX cast. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Quite a bit of wood smoke in actual fact. Um, herbal, treacly, dark PX fruit. I mean, I'm quite surprised given the sort of like the, the colour of it. Um, I would have expected it to be more sort of, or to be lighter in actual fact. But it's, it's quite noticeable. Um, it's clove, cinnamon, quite fragrant, um, but again, like the um, the port, quite sort of obviously PX. Dark chocolate, wood smoke, grapey, winey, PX fruit, dried fruit, treacle, um, dark coffee. I mean, even though it was quite light in colour, it has definitely picked, picked up the PX character quite an awful lot. And um, possibly more so than, than the, the, uh, the pork cask. Uh, again, no real indication of what the character of the spirit is like. It's certainly blemish free. It's kind of treacly and sort of PXy. Uh, and if you like that style of whiskey, then fine. But to me, it it really doesn't sort of say anything about the spirit or its place. Right. Okay. So let's move on to the peated. So let's see what uh, the nose gives us in this end, shall we? Okay, that's got some nice elegance. Um, softly astringent peat. Um, barley, a little bit of chocolatiness. Um, toffee. Okay, so there's some some fruit there. I'm finally getting a kind of a, an inkling as to the distillery character. It's kind of... I'm trying to ignore the peat and just focus on the spirit. Um, and it's quite barley scented, it's clean, it's fresh. Um, it's not in the estuary fruit camp, so I would probably say relatively shortish fermentation time. Um, a little bit of a little bit of French oak tannin coming through with a little bit of grip. Um, personally, this is the, the, the most the, the better balanced and. But for the life of me, I don't understand why they haven't released an unpeated spirit in an American oak or in American oak cards to sort of uh, at least give you an idea of what they're trying to do. Because it's all well and good, isn't it? Sort of saying, you know, oh, we're going to do sort of terroir based or, you know, we're making a, a typical whiskey from wherever. It's a case of, well, yeah, OK, that's fine. Absolutely fine. But, you know, stick it in something that's sort of, you know, in refill American oak or something like that and, and kind of give us an idea of the of the actual spirit. Um, there's a little bit of creaminess coming out now, but again, that's going to be the um, the ex bourbon. Let's see what the past one. Mm. Again, it's a pleasantly peated malt. Kicks off with some sweet barley, a little bit of sweet oak, vanilla, um, 
there's a touch of chocolate, uh, pepper, mm. lovely pepperiness on, on the finish, subtle peat, Real, nice balance. Um, I'm getting the, obviously the barley notes, I'm getting a little idea of the distillery character. You kind of have to ignore the peat to a certain extent to kind of try and focus on that. Um, it's a little citric. It's obviously an intriguing spirit. I would Again, I would love to see this in American oak, unpeated American oak. Let me know what kind of base spirit you are aiming for, you know. Um, and for the life of me, I just don't understand why that they don't do it. But, you know, they don't. <laughs> So let's sum today's episode of the show. Firstly, a big thank you to the, the, the distributors uh, for or whoever sent me these samples. That's really very cool. Um, the um, the Cairo rye, it, well, yep, it pretty much uh, lived up to expectations, very much in the style of sort of young European rye, probably around about three, four years old. Very soft, no, very soft. But... Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Um, okay, so Cairo, interesting stuff, I have to say. Um, the, the It's kind of flagship bottling, I suppose, for want of a better word. Just, it, it, it kind of, it, it, as expected, like a lot of young European rye whiskies, it was all about that sort of young, fainty, sort of intense rye character, um, and which, at the end of the day, kind of le leaves me a little bit cold. It's a bit short. Um, and didn't really sort of do a great deal for me. Uh, the wood smoke, uh, yep, yeah, interesting. Um, like I said, the smokiness was definitely sort of of the non-peated variety. You could tell that it was a little bit longer, um, less of that sort of fainty young rye, which is possibly a good thing, and a little bit more, a little bit more balance. Uh, the Montblasiac cask, I thought, was probably their best bottling. Um, it's certainly the Montblasiac cask added some sweetness which balanced up against the young rye. Um, it had more length, more complexity, more interest for me personally. Um, but obviously it's probably, the, the, well, I, I don't know, forget how much it retailed for, but obviously the more expensive of the bottling. So, um, but yeah, that was for me the, the, the more intriguing of the bottlings. Uh, Moscard, uh, the, the port. All about the port cast, not a port monster or uh, an oak monster, but that was the obvious overriding character here, and I just didn't get any kind of inkling of the distillery character whatsoever. And exactly the same for the PX. The PX just went down exactly the same route, all about the cask. And it's not a surprise, you know, you age your spirit in small 50 litre barrels, you are going to get a lot of oak character very quickly. We know that. Um, but does that necessarily make for a balanced whiskey at the end of the day? Um, the peated was probably for me their most interesting bottling because at least I got an inkling into the style of the spirit that they were producing. Um, you kind of have to ignore the peat to sort of get to that point and it still just asks the question why are you not doing a bottling wholly aged in ex-American oak? Uh, it would just sort of like you know be to me the mo more interesting but then Obviously, um, I don't work for the distillery and I'm obviously in the minority here, I guess. So anyway, I um, hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the show. It, to, to me, it's been really intriguing, really interesting. Uh, and, um, you know, if any of these kind of like, you know, sounds like your kind of cup of tea, then like I said, as I always say, you know, you, you pick up a bottling, if you pick up a sample, great, you know, you try them, you make up your own mind, just don't take, obviously, my word for it, um, give it give it a go yourself. So, anyway, um, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag, uh, I'm probably going to, going to sit out in the garden, now it's just absolutely lovely out there, and, oh no, we've not even got to lunchtime yet, oh, brew for breakfast, um, <laughs> Anyway, until next week, good afternoon and good dramming. Secret password you told me and I had changed.